So good morning, January the 13th, 2017. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number two in the first week of this semester. So let's get started. First of all, welcome back to this class. This is the Friday class at the 10 o'clock, so it's a little bit technically difficult for many of you who are still sleeping. So I'm glad that I'm still to see so many very birds here. Why I was here about 15 minutes ago, uh, there are more than 10 students standing in front of the door, and one girl told me the door is locked. So I say, okay, let me just go to the security office and tell them that they forgot to open the door for this classroom, 2043 for E3. And then they were shocked. Oh, classroom door not open? I say yes, and I have many students waiting outside. So um, I gave them the number E3 2043, and they told me that in about five minutes time, someone is going to come up here to open the door. And then I walked back here with about three minutes to five minutes, and I still discovered the door has not yet been opened, so I asked the help of my teaching assistant, Sheldon, to go to tell them the door has not yet been opened yet, and by the time Seldon left me, in just less than 30 seconds, I saw over there a security guard was coming. And then he was coming, not by himself, he was coming with a cleaning lady. And so he opened the door when I looked at the clock, it's 10.01. And then now it's 10.10, 10, 10, okay? And um, it takes some time for my computer to reset itself. So I have to do... I have to do something go for a violent time before my computer comes up. How many of you still remember what we talk about as of Tuesday? Now, let me ask you, how many of you have actually gone online to the Moodle environment over the past few days to respond to some of the questions that I posed there? Now, I read the forum this morning and I could see that more than 10 students did the response and they did it very uh, conscientiously and they put in some very interesting comment. Have to watch for them. If not, even though my computer is not working, but you have your cell phone, so it's a good time for you to take out your cell phone, go online to the mobile environment because it's there 24 seven and go to the forum there and read some of the posts by your fellow students in this class. And before we are ready, I highly suggest that you also post some of your comments because we're going to talk about this today. So spend about five minutes time, go online with your mobile devices. Most of you have the smartphone, which could allow you to go online to the internet environment. And I would like you to catch the UM Moodle environment at the University of Macau, and then you can see some of the posts. How are you going to see that? You just go to visit the Buddha side of this course, CISG113, section 1. You can see a number of courses under your Buddha page, and you just select CISG113, section 1. And once you got locked in to this Buddha environment, you just need to scroll down to week number one and go to tools to track your learning. And when you get to the tools to track your learning, select CISG one, uh, the section one, uh, topic online discussion forum for week number one. You just need to get into that forum. Once you get into that forum, you can see a discussion track posed by me and more than 10 other discussion threads which are supposed to be the responses by your fellow student and you can read some of the posts there. Now today we're going to do a lot of online active things through the Moodle environment, through your smart devices, your intelligent phone and we would like you to try the forum first because the forum is a very good tool for you to see uh, some of the interactions among your fellow students here. Okay, good. Let's go back to my computer. Just go ahead and explore the model, as what I said, and then we are ready, and I'm going to kick off today's class in about five minutes time. Oh boy. All right. 
Here we go. Read some of those discussions, and you can actually now you you are seated in your table. Of course, you need to introduce yourself to your table member if you have not done so on the first on Tuesday. All right, so Fence is going to be ready. What have you discovered? This is the 21st century, and so when you walk into the 21st century classroom, which is a little bit closer to that, um, you've got to have some device of your own to get you hooked up to the online environment, which is in this case, the, the university of Canada, environment, which is called a learning management system. Okay, learning management system on, on the part of the teacher, it facilitates our teachings on the part of the students, it facilitates the learning. And so it's something good. So you should not hesitate to get online very often. And my suggestion is to go online to the window environment at least once a day. The best is three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. Here we are. Okay. So, before the days of the UR Moodle environment, we sometimes use the websites from outside of the university. And um, if you discover after our Tuesday's class, if you know that I'm actually using both, okay? Um, once you have visited the Moodle environment of this course, you know that we are using both. We are trying to complement the weaknesses of the UM Moodle's learning management system with some of the convenience from the outside patterns. And mostly, they are free of charge. Okay, now I'm great that we are back here, so I'm here. First of all, you need to go to webcourse.umac.mo and we have a number of things for you. So we're using your Moodle at your residential college. You will be learning in your first year this Mahara ePortfolio system and some of the uh, departments of colleges or residential college will be introduced to you. The community side, which is again a Moodle side, but it's, you do not need a uh, password to get into it. And Contracts is a very useful tool to help you to do some research. Turnitin is a good tool for teachers to check if you're just copying someone's work and submit it as, if, as your own. But we're not concerned with the rest of it except for your Moodle, so we click on this. So once you click on the your Moodle, you were brought, you will be brought to this block inside, and you just need to go to lock in here. And so you need to type in your user ID. Very often for students, it is whatever that appears before your UF email address. Okay? So all right. And of course I will not let you see my password, so it's encrypted. So now I already logged in to my list of courses, uh, you will have something similar with all the courses you're taking in this semester. And so the first one is our course, Information Security and Privacy, with this course code CISG113, section one, offer in the second semester of the academic year 2016 to 2017. So when you click on this link, you will be brought to our environment here. So this is where we started on Tuesday. And so when I look at the participants' needs, I can see that we have 52 members, including me and Xiao your teaching assistant. So all together, we should have 50 students. Full house, very great, we have full house. But not only there will be frustrations um, in the number of students in the coming two weeks. So this is the head of rock that I introduced to you on Tuesday. Uh, it's a sign managed by me, Dr. Bart, and I hope some of you have already read through the Learning Center syllabus that I introduced to you. 
to read through it before coming to this class on Friday. And then you also have some general education program in tandem learning outcomes. That means at the end of your general education program at the University of Macau, you should expect to be able to do some of the works here. And for this course, we have the course learning objective, the CLO, the course learning objectives. We just have three learning objectives in this course, but we do have some course independent learning outcomes. We have six. Now, the differences between course learning objectives and the course intended learning outcomes is this. Course learning objectives are very much the expectations uh, that is given by the teachers to everybody in this course and also to everybody outside of this course and what we would like to accomplish. Okay, but this is just an expectation statement. But the course intended learning outcomes means these are the set of abilities the students who take this course will be able to demonstrate towards the end of the course. And for the teacher of this course, we need to gather evidence of our students' learning throughout the course to indicate, to argue, to convince out of that those students who have taken this course are sure to have the ability to do a number of things there because of the evidence that we collected throughout the course from each student. So it's very much a course that is based on one key word, experiential learning. Now, this is a very sensitive word, a very useful word, experiential learning. Because in other courses, as I mentioned in the first class, uh, you come to the university by selecting a major area of study from your department of, for example, accounting, from your department of electrical engineering or psychology. These are DE courses, disciplinary education courses. When you register for the DE courses, the content is king. But in this particular course, it's a general education course, we have so much concern with both the content and the process of the learning. When we talk about the process of the learning, it's something about how do you transition yourself from a taught to learn student, as you have experienced so much, in the secondary school to a learn to learn student at the university. So you will see a lot about this when you click on this link, but we will go into it step by step. So having gone through this, under this head block, we have three important items. We have called it tools to help us to get organized in this course. The first is the attendance for each course. As you can see, that I demonstrate to you how did I take attendance of your presence in class last night. The second one is very important. It's called course announcement and news. It's a one-way stream. Whenever I would like you to be aware of something, I'm going to write you a message here, and you do not have the opportunity to respond because it's a teacher's forum. You just have the obligations to make sure that you are well informed of this by reading this. But for the forum here, the social forum, it is everybody's forum. If you want to have something to share with the whole class, you just need to come here, type up what you want to share with a specific title, then everybody in this class will be well informed of what you want to say, okay? So that is called a social forum. It's a kind of public forum for the whole semester, okay? So that is the basic setup. I've also given you some tools, for example, if you want to be aware of what does it mean, a particular English work in Chinese, you can use this online English Chinese dictionary, okay, so you can just type it, and then it's very convenient. Uh, one of these is something like this, all right, very simple. And then, um, if you want to have the English dictionary for yourself, this is another one. So, you just have to use the tools that I provided here to help you to learn something uh, in a language that may not be your native language of speaking. 
And then I do have a very uh, interesting um, speed up Durango's course here that's free of charge. If you need help to speed up Durango's in order to learn something, you can just come to this course. Um, it's free of charge, it contains many individual modules, and you can spend um, five to ten minutes per module. You can definitely improve your English throughout the whole semester 14 weeks. Remember, these are free of charge, okay? Including conversations, grammar, writing, whatever it is, okay? So, not only I have this experience that many students who come to the university are educated in Chinese school, and so when we speak, or when we use common English and help you understand and learn something, we need to provide some help, okay? So, having said that, um, this is the people walk into the Buddha environment with head rock. So, let's come to week number one. So, as, I, as I'm introduced to you that this is week number one, as I told you that this is Tuesday and this is Friday, so this is week number one. We have two days in this week, two contact periods, including I use day one and day two, and for each day we have 75 minutes each. And we gather in this room to study together, and for this week the theme is what is information security and what is information privacy. Now, I have not talked anything about this, except that in the very first class, I invite you to watch a news documentary which was produced by TVB Gerald News on the 8th of August, 2015. It's still a very popular uh, episode because uh, many things come back to us just as a new every year. We know that many people still suffer from traps like this, the phone scam, okay, the hackings, um, many things um, that is being discussed in this episode are examples of information security and also examples of information privacy. Okay, uh, that's what we talk about on day one. Besides this, um, I also introduced to you on day one this important theme song called this is your own road, York, okay? So it's a very important song. So having done this, uh, I also um, videotape every class lecture. So uh, as of the first day, you can just click on this link, you can review what we've gone through on the first day. Okay, this is, if you miss a class, you can also come back to look at what we did, and this is exactly what we did. Um, videotaping today, okay? So, but this does not mean that you don't need to come to class, okay? It's very important that you come back here. So, so these are the convenience. So, at the end of the day, you can also see there is another link here for the YouTube video. So, uh, if you speak here, you are on YouTube too, alright? So, you're comfortable. This is the 21st century. So, today, uh, before we start everything, alright? Let me introduce to you the important core support side. Remember I mentioned at the beginning of the class that we use both the UN Moodle environment and I also use some external website to help us to put things in order. And so when you go to the course home here, it's called Core Support Side. Um, it is hosted by the pbworks.com. And so you can see the this is the the web address. You can see that CISG113, and this is spring 2017. You can see that I have many sites like this. So this is spring 2017, and that is the core support environment for many of you. It looks very much the same, but a lot of differences with more and richer environment. So if you want to know the program intended learning outcomes of this course, just click on those links. And again, we have those particular links for you. And I hope you spend some time reading through some of this link, even though you may not understand all of the details yet. This is day number two. But the calendar is very important. You can, you can see that this is the calendar for the semester. Uh, we have 14 weeks in this semester, including the very last day of the class schedule on May the 2nd, which is 
called week number 15. So if you look at these, you can see that on each week we have some topics to cover. I do not want to use the word cover because it's an EE course word. I want to use the word inquiry. Okay, we have a lot of topics to inquire about, so they can go something about this. And so, introductions for this week. We have a common module, of course, all the GE course in this category 13, IT and Knowledge Society. I think this is the last semester we are going to talk about that. Because starting from next year, we have a new GE framework. And then, common module 2, 3, 4, you can see the common module dance here. And then, topic 1, 2. 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we can serve 3 weeks for the learning portfolio. That is very important. Before I tell you anything, I must tell you that there is no final exam in this course. The reason is we use the idea of the learning portfolio, which you're going to construct um, towards the last four weeks of the semester, in order to use this as the context to rephrase your final exam, okay? So, there's no final exam, but there is a midterm exam, but in the, in the past semester, students have a choice. If you do, do not want to sit for the midterm exam, you will do a presentation, it's called the speech of the semester, okay? Um, up to uh, week number 11, okay? Uh, the speech of the semester presentations is on a single topic that is called what I have learned in this course in the first 10 weeks, okay? That is what we call the midterm. Um, you can use that speech of the semester to rephrase the midterm. And I will set a poll to ask for your uh, suggestions. If um, more than half of the class say, Oh, let's go for the speech of the semester, then we'll go for the speech of the semester instead of the midterm. And you can see that we have three assignments uh, considered as contract one, two, and three in the semester. Um, the, first, the first contract you need to submit is in, in week number four, okay? Uh, not only in week number four, it's by the end of the week, so it's February the 18th to February the 19th, the two days time for you to submit your work in the first learning contract. Uh, the other facts, if you want to know what to submit, you just click on this link. But I will normally uh, write you a message to spell out clearly what you need to prepare for that particular learning contract, which might be a little bit different from what is being said here. Not only is fewer items than that and much more concise. So the second homework I hate to use homework. Assignment a contract for learning contract two is due on March 11th. Okay, so it's from March 11th to March 12th. Uh, click on this link and you can see um, what's entailed in this contract. The last contract you need to submit is on week number 10 on April the 1st to April the 2nd. Okay, so these are things you need to remember. I will write message to remind you, but I just want you to know that you know what to submit when from the first week of the semester. I don't tell you until one day before what you have to submit. You always have to refer back to this calendar. We will not change a lot except for the exact number of items of what you need to prepare which might be a little bit different based on your feedback, okay? So, um, having said that, I will hold you responsible to go through this particular number of links. So, I think I will have about five minutes time to introduce to you what we would like to talk about today. Um, you watch the first episodes, which is the um, news story last time. So you have some background for discussions in your table, uh, together with some of the polls by your fellow students. Okay, so if you want to know what did they say, you just come to this public online discussion forum for week number one. And you can see that right here, we have more than 10 students who have responded already. Now, I very much appreciate that you create your own discussion thread. 
but the way to respond to a call for discussion should be something like this. You first of all, you first of all come back to my thread. Okay, this is my thread, discussion thread. So when you click on this discussion thread, you will see what I have invited you to do. So you provide your feedback. And how do you provide your feedback? Now, you are very smart. The way you did it is you create your feedback link. But actually, the proper way to do it is to click on reply. You click the reply and you type your feedback on the reply page. That way, I could see that my suggested discussion thread has the following number of students' responses. Okay, so remember, when I invite you to provide response based on this thread, next time, click on reply and then type something in. We could tidy up a lot by doing that, okay? Now, it is not, it is, uh, it is not wrong for you to do something like this here, but in this particular case, you can say that we have many students who would like to have a follower. Suppose I click on this link. If you want to respond to Venus on her possible comments on this, you just need to click on reply. And so you can carry out the conversations with Venus. All right? So this is a very convenient way for us to keep track of the discussions records. All right? So um, I've just given you one feedback. So before I invite you to do something in class today, let me give you a little bit of what my expectations are. Okay? First of all, I've spoken too long, so I would like to call for your attention to what you're going to do. I will give you about five minutes time to understand a key mentality in learning in class that is called AL, active learning. The way active learning is being understood, the way active learning is being done in class, in about five minutes time, you will have a pretty good understanding. And then after this video, which you watch in your table, I want you to spend about two to three minutes time to organize yourself, okay? So that you understand the expectations from members of the table. Again, it's a very good time for you to introduce who you are if it is your first time here. It's also important for you to ask for the names of your fellow member in your table, just two to three minutes. So we're budgeting the next activity in about eight minutes time, about five minutes on the video, and two to three minutes on your table-based interactions before we come back to some issues for today, okay? So let's go ahead for active learning. assignment can have several active learning pieces within it. Third, in order to consider something like learning, students must be doing something including discovering, processing, and applying information, not just listening to a lecture or reading a PowerPoint. Active learning can take many different forms, and instructors often use different strategies in face-to-face -face and online classes due to their different approaches to teaching and learning. For example, in a classroom, the instructor might ask each student to turn to their neighbor and discuss a particular topic. In an online course, the same exercise can be accomplished using a discussion thread, document sharing, or instant messaging. The idea is the same, but the approach is different. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face class example, simply having students turn to their neighbor and discuss a topic is active learning. In the online course, having two students discuss the same topic via discussion thread is active learning as well. Research shows that students learn more when they're engaged in active learning. It's important to remember that lecture does have its place in both face-to-face -face and online environments. However, during active learning, students are involved in much more than just reading or listening, and more emphasis is placed on higher-order thinking skills, 
such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Further research has shown that students retain 70% of what they say and write, and they retain 90% of what they do. Compare this with the fact that students retain only 10% of what they read and 20% of what they hear, and you'll start to understand why active learning is so important. Now that we have an understanding of what active learning is and why we should implement it, let's look at some specific examples to give you a clearer picture of what constitutes active learning in practice. Let's take the example of a small group discussion. In a face-to-face -face setting, you might group students up and ask them to discuss a particular topic. While this alone is active learning, you can add to the exercise by asking each group to present their findings to the class in the form of a standard presentation, a radio or TV commercial, or a comedy skit. Now let's look at a small group discussion in an online course. You can group students into separate discussion threads and have them discuss a particular topic. Again, this alone can be considered active learning, but you can add to the exercise by having students present their findings using various Web 2.0 tools, such as recording a presentation with a PowerPoint or Prezi, submitting a voice thread with audio and a series of images that relate to the topic, or present their topic in story format using Google Maps. As you can see, the possibilities are virtually limitless, so be creative. Both our face-to-face -face and online active learning examples cover the higher order thinking skills of analysis and synthesis, but what about evaluation? In this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of each presentation. In a face-to-face -face class, you can simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. This should spur more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, Peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Each step in the process is itself a distinct active learning strategy. Since students retain more information during active learning, simply stated, Active learning equals better learning. Okay, now you're on your own. After you have got the message on active learning for three minutes time, and then I'm going to give you something to carry on. On your own, in your table, your discussion. What are you supposed to discuss? Introduce yourself. Get back to your table member what your perceptions of eight error is all about. Oh, AM, simple. AM means better learning. So, in what way? Okay, three minutes. I'm going to count you. Now it's 10 for eight, nine, and I'm going to start you at 10 42. Three minutes for table discussion. Three minutes for table discussion.
Participate in this exercise called table based discussions, 
The way to do it is very simple. Don't worry about a lot of English you need to read. I want you to do, I want you to do some O steps here. O means observations. What do we mean by observations? We observe with our eyes. We observe with our ears. We observe with our senses. And in this particular news story, we invite you to observe with your eyes, with your ears, with your thinking. And then you see that there are two parts here. Okay, we watched the two parts completely in last class. I want you to spend 10 minutes now discussing with your table member by exercising your ability to do observations. Observation is very simple. When you read the news story here, about 22 minutes, half of this is about 10 minutes time, you will see that there are certain examples which might impress you, okay? So what you need to do is to take those examples that you prefer to select for discussions in your table and write some of your personal observations here in your group, okay? So the way to do it is very simple. This time, in each table, you can do it this way. You can just type reply to share it here, or you can create your own friend. For example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tables here. Let's do it this way. One, the back, the back row, two, three, four. So table one, table two, table three, table four. This is table five, six, seven, eight, okay? So whenever you want to share with your fellow members something, you need to identify which table you belong. So if I would like to share something, I'm going to type reply, okay? So this is my reply. So I would say table zero one. If I am Jesse, I'll type Jesse, and then I would say, here are my observations. Okay? And then you type one, two, three, four. Make it simple. Don't type long paragraphs, okay? Include this in your forum, okay? We are trying to invite you to do it in 10 minutes time, okay? Uh, 10 minutes is actually just enough if you want to repeat watching the story. But I just want you to do it in such a way that what is your impressions after watching this video? Particularly, the theme is something that is connected with information security to the best of your understanding, something that is connected with information privacy to the best of your understanding. So each table try to contribute to the learning of the whole class by writing following this format. Each one of you will be able to respond because you have your own devices, you just need to type something in. So we are going to start now from 10.49 and we are going to stop at 11 o'clock, okay? So I want to gather some ideas first, all right? So once you type something in, make sure you remember to post to the following. Press post to the following. In the meantime, you can talk, you can share, whatever you do, all right? So this is one important in-class activity. Welcome. Sorry. We still don't have one team coming All right? So carry on with this activity. <laughs> Reply. And this is table number two. 
whatever you type, type table number two first, and then you type your name, and then some observations. Type table number two first. About the yes, about the story. How? About the story? Yeah, this is the new story you watched last time. Oh. Yes, yes, because we're talking about information security. Yes. Okay, you can have a chance, but you can still watch. Or well, you can ask for it. Yes. Yes. You just have to manage your time. Good boy. Uh, it's alright. Wow, this is I can profession. It's not a time man. Thank you. 
Jolies. Thank you. Nicholas. Oh, thank you. Nicholas. Venus. Thank you. G. G. Kapik. Okay. Thank you very much. K. Thank you, K. Jose. Thank you. Okay. Nico. Nico. Thank you. Shu. C. Pain. C. Pain. C. Pain. Not here today. Okay, that's good. We have fewer than five students who are not here. You have four more minutes before we come back to the, uh, to the forums to check on the, the responses. Still do not have uh, any response. No one has pressed the return yet. Okay, you need to press reply under day number two. Okay. It's very meaningful though, when you come back to read some of the responses by your fellow students um, in response to my first request on day number one, in order to make sure that you could, you could see what others people see, these multiple perspective, this is a very good tool on the forum. You can read some of your fellow students' responses, okay? Now we have three more minutes. Looks like Let's see. I need some responses on my second thread, this one, okay? So maybe I need to refresh it. Yes, I got at least one now from Henry. Okay? So you need to tell some of your observations from the video, okay, about information security and privacy. Okay? So, make sure you, you contribute to the learning of your fellow students by giving some of the important observations. We need your input, okay? We are talking about after you, watch, after you have watched this particular news story, what can you tell us by exercising your observation step to give us some of your observations concerning information security and information privacy that is being discussed or reported in this episode. It's very important. So, um, the next step, when time is up in about one minute, I'm going to walk to different tables and invite you to share with the whole class your table's observations on this very interesting episode which is aired in TVB Joe, the news story called Hacking, okay, or Deception, Phone Scams, all right. Time is ticking. I'm going to I'm going to call for a number and you are going to perform a mathematics for me and then the remainder of the divisions is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So the remainder is going to determine which table is going to be a table to share. Okay, time is up, now 11 o'clock. So the number is, would you please add them together? 2017, okay? 2017 divided by 8. What is the remainder? 2017 divided by 8. What is the remainder? It's impossible to be done. It must be a number less than 8. 1? Is it 1? 
One, right? One. Remainder is one. Yeah. Okay, so your table. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Can you tell something about your observations? You ready? Not yet. So table number one is not ready. So now let's do another number. Today is January the how many? Friday. 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 Oh, no. Someone suggests Friday means table five. Okay. So maybe can you share with us some of your observations? I'm watching the episode. Don't worry. You will not use any. <laughs> Any observations? Henry, have you written something before? Yes, share with us. Just pick up the mic. Yes. Okay, table five is going to help us to understand some of the observations. So let me let me point this out, okay? It's time for you to understand observations it's responsible for discovering informational materials on the topic selected such as reading an article, watching a video clip and listening to a speech. So what you need to do is to share with us some of the things you discover on the video. Can you name some of the things you discover from the video? Let's pick up the mic. Yeah, Henry. Yeah. Or you can ask the help from your table members. One idea from each member, that would be good enough. First is your idea. You just need to name some of the things you discover. Okay? You discover. Yes, from the video, the new story. Yeah. What have you discovered? It's okay, don't be shy. No one is going to pee on you. It's what have you discovered? Thanks. Thanks. We discovered that ethnic learning is the majority of our students who speak more and think more and think about any. Yes? It's useful, it's useful that the child's learning. And the student not just sitting in the classroom is a they can discuss with yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. What's the name? Um, Joy. Joey. Right? Joy. 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 Thank you, Joy. <coughs> now, Joy has done a very good work in terms of helping us to understand how to connect active learning to what we are going to discover. So, any more we will discover it from the new story? Yes, you can say something. <laughs> on the new story. The new story, it's on this new story. What have you discovered? You watched the last week, last class, in day number one. On this new story. Yeah. So what do you remember? What do you remember about this new story? Information security is very important. We should do more things to protect our privacy. Now, when you read the story from day number one, what have you discovered? Can you share with us something? Yes. There are plenty of ways that the car can get access to our devices, so we should stay out of when we are using it. Very good. There are plenty of ways a hacker could get access to our devices when we use computer-related devices. So we should be very much alert to observe what's happening. Thank you. What's your name? 
Franco, thank you very much. Jose, you want to add something? Or this is uh, it helps to understand your perspective, okay? Don't worry much about, there's nothing right or wrong here. It's just an important input, all right? Do you use WeChat? Yeah. So what did you discover when you use WeChat that is going to be harmful to you? protect our private information when we set the profile of those account. So it's very often our private information is easily picked up by anyone and shared around their own circles of friends. Okay, that's very good. Are you using Facebook too? Okay, that's good. So what do you think? Uh, open microphone. I believe it's in any information, information, for example, Facebook and Facebook. Okay. Yeah, uh, so it depends on the fact. Yeah. Uh, so we have to read carefully about the title and what we Excellent. He, he talks about many emails that does not seem to be um, harmful, but actually, that's the trap. So we all know that. And have you heard something about ransomware? Ransomware. You know what is meant by ransom? If I kidnap you, I call your father. Ah, your son is in my hand. Pay me the ransom so that I'm going to release them. him or her. Ransom. Okay? Ransomware means it's the kind of software if you are not careful enough, once it act, is activated in your computer, it will secure all your files and encrypt them. And you will not be able to use them again until you got the key to decrypt it. And normally, a hacker will use ransomware to challenge you if you are the boss of a big company. I'm going to tell you that from this moment on, where all your company data are in my hand, you will not be able to access it because it's being kidnapped by my software. If you want to have your data back, you pay ransom before a particular time, and then I will give you back your data. And I tell you what, even the FBI in the United States sometimes advise those company boss, you better pay them the rent, we can solve it. Have you heard of something about this? Okay, you want to share something about this? Uh, well, um, yep. In this case, I have some suggestions. For example, Thank you. the data in another place, in right. another location. As for me, I have a this hard disk, uh, which has terabytes of a lot of uh, pictures. And uh, uh, I use, uh, uh, I store them uh, in Macau and another copy of them uh, in Beijing, another right. place. So even if the hackers can lock out my data in Macau, I have another copy, so I don't worry, I don't need to worry about that. That is a very smart move. Yes, that's a very smart move. What's the name? Gleed. Uh, okay, have you heard Gleed's advice, observations? Okay, besides ransomware, now you know that Ob who is Obama? You know who is Obama? The former president of the United States. But now, who is the president of the United States? The crazy man Trump, right? <laughs> crazy man Trump. So, what did they discover weeks ago after Trump won the election? 
do you know the story? What's the story? The story said, according to the intelligence from the US government, the fact that Trump could win the elections because of the hacking effect from Russia. Okay? And it's scary. And when we talk about hacking, what are we talking about? We are talking about using someone else's identity to post some information on the public media as if it is will. To create some kind of effect on people so that they will believe that who is better than who. And so when they cast the vote, they will cast the vote to someone instead of the other person. Okay, so have you heard something about this? All right, so um, now I really want to give each table an opportunity to try to share. So now I would like to pass the time to this table. Can you share something? Do you have any idea on information security and privacy before we stop? Okay, next time. When you look at the clock, it's time to go. So I would like to share with you the way for you to learn something from this class is not to miss something very good for you to start out from there and use your observation to list those important points of your concern. Normally, in this general education class, what you need to use is your basic thinking skills, okay? And then use your basic writing skill, and then use your basic talking skills, okay? So, and of course, you can also use your basic taking a break skill, all right? All right, so um, we hope that you enjoy this class, and you will come back to this class next week for another episode of learning. But right before you go, allow me to remind you Many students ask me after the last class, what do we need to do after your class serve? And then my response is very simple. I will activate the links here. You see the links that before class, what you're supposed to do. During class, what you're supposed to do. After class, you know what you're supposed to do. At the end of the week, what you're supposed to do. If you want the answer to those questions, what do you need to do after each class, even though if you have finished reading the syllabus, you should be pretty much very far, come back to those names by the end of the day. I will activate those names because now is the end of the second day of this week. And when you visit those names, you should have a pretty good picture what I expect you to do. All right? Not a lot, but just enough for you to carry on for the next week. Welcome back to this class. This is day number two on CISG 113, section one, information security and privacy. And so until next week, have a very good weekend. Bye-bye.